Hello and welcome to Uncovered, the podcast with your host, Jason Irving. Join me in a journey to understand what's truly happening in your world and the world around you. This is not about how you're living life on the surface. It's about what's truly driving you from under the covers. I'm going to take you on a journey to deeply uncover the reason why you are here. The ultimate purpose in your problems and the way that they have shaped your life up until now. See, I believe you have a purpose and your problems are the highway towards ultimate realization of that journey towards freedom and the reconnection of your true self. I've been told I have a different spin on most things and I'll be giving you my understanding of life, love and what we're all here for, purpose. To get the best out of this podcast, drop what you already know so you can discover what's beyond you. So join me, let's play this game of life and bring on liberation, transformation and change. Let's do this. Hey, how you going guys? I'm with Mr. Chris Radnich. How are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good, surprisingly not nervous about this. Yeah, well, that's that's a good change. I'm probably more nervous than you. <laughs> so is there anything you can help me with? <laughs> You've been the master healer and all. Like, I'm really excited to have, uh, have you here, Chris. Uh, I've known you for quite a while now and uh, I've been on a bit of a journey with you mm. uh, with life. Uh, and one of the things I'd love to ask you about is that, you know, you're in a space now where you really are living life and you didn't really want to be here. Can you tell us about, you know, what your history was, where you were, where you were? You've been doing healing for a very, very long time before I met you. Mm. Um, but where, where were you at inside of yourself um, all those years ago? Uh, yeah, I realised that um, in my life there's been depression since I was a teenager that didn't really come out until I had placements when I was doing my Masters of Physio. Uh, which I ended up having to stop doing because of the, the depression and chronic fatigue was just too much. And then about two years later, I met you. Um, if I met you earlier, it probably would have been a different story, I think. Um, yeah, so depression's always been in there. Um, yeah, uh, my upbringing was pretty scary. Um, so tell us about that. You had some yeah. experiences with family and, and that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just a lot of a lot of anger, uh, threats of violence, um, a lot of emotional, like soul destroying, yeah. kind of uh, kind of abuse, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so that was always in the background. And then because I did so much exercise, like I got into martial arts when I was twelve, um, wanted to be a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> that was you the are a ninja. back in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, to be a ninja. That's part of the rules when you're in the eighties. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to be a ninja too, I was just too little. <laughs> oh, ninjas are actually small, you're yeah, massive. you can hide easier. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> yeah. yeah, so I got into martial arts then and then uh, weightlifting and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and I think all the physical exercise, it offset the depression until the placement uh, at, at the hospital. So tell me, what, what was that about? What, what was the placement? What, what treated you? Uh, at the time, I don't think I really knew. It was, um, there was a, a different schedule for one, so I'm not good at getting up in the morning and never sort of have been. Mm. Um, so I had to get up early, it was a long trip, and then I'd be sort of triggered by the time I got to the hospital and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, I have this running commentary in my head that I'm not good enough, that I'm dumb and all that sort of stuff. So mm. I'd rock up to the hospital, I'd smash my, um, my exams and the... Uh, the lady, the lady was so keen to work with me when we got to the hospital. Like I felt like I'd forgotten everything. It was, it was really bad. So I failed my first placement there. But um, I remember just coming home every day and eating like a block of chocolate. I, I didn't know why I was eating so much sugar and all that sort of stuff. And zero motivation to study. Zero, I, you know, hardly wanted to do any kung fu training even. When mm. I did that, I probably about one to three, sometimes five hours most days of the week. That that was that was my thing. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't exercise like I used to to keep up the neurochemicals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so you're yeah. starting to lose lose it basically, which is what yeah. a lot of people do, especially men mm. uh, in the world, not really verbalising how they feel to anybody and caving yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I had no no support really at the time, and um, I tend to rely on partners. I've found just in the last course that we've done for sort of emotional support and things like that, and it's mm. like she couldn't provide me what I needed, and it's not not her role to. I've learned now that um, so I didn't really have any support at the time, really. Yeah. Just just my own kung fu training and what I thought was one of the meditation I did was it, it would help me. I could go from feeling extremely depressed to, to extremely elated and didn't need to be anyone or anything and happy to be who I am and all sorts of stuff with the meditation. But then that would last a few hours and I'd have to practice that again and that would take one to two hours of practice. 
So meditation helped me a lot, but also become a problem where it's like this isn't really quite working. It's yeah. Like, why can't I make this integrate into my life? Yeah, and that's that's one of the big things about meditation. People use it as a crutch as mm. opposed to uh, yeah. a, a way of getting getting through. Now, you you met me a while ago. Yeah, what 20, happened? Yeah. What happened when you met me? What was there an impact? What oh, what, huge, what was it that huge, um, yeah. that made me a little bit different to? The experiences that you have had yeah i was working at queen at, at a massage a physio clinic out there doing massage and i had a number of people come through and was like um you know i'm here to i'm waiting to see this guy jason moving and it's a six-week waiting list and you know i think you're about to help me everyone says he can and all sorts of stuff so i, I kept hearing you over and over and over i was like oh, okay, okay the universe is saying i need to see this guy so i made an appointment to see then i went to a buddhist wedding and someone was talking about you were there and i was like oh, that seals the deal i've got to definitely see you now Anyway, um, yeah, I went there and I went to see you and um, uh, yeah, pretty much read my patterning in about five minutes and um, I knew you had uh, some psychic ability and I was open to uh, that and what, what I could help me with and all that, all that sort of stuff. And then in that session, uh, you asked me, how's your relationship? Because I come with a shoulder issue. How's your relationship? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> then you told me later that clients often lie and it was like, no, it w wasn't good. The relationship it was falling apart and I was really overwhelmed and stuff. And he, uh, anyway, um, yeah, and then you said we got we got to integrate uh, a lot of things right now, and just take deep breath in. And I just lost it. I was wailing on your table, and um, yeah, just the integration after that. I had a had an addiction. I don't really want to say what the addiction was, but I had an addiction for most of my life, mm. probably twenty years at least. That was gone after one session. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and the, the second session sort of sealed it, but it's like that first session integrated. You've never um, told me this. No. How no. good I was. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just yeah, smoking yeah. around. <laughs> um, so you had that. You had that experience, and quite often I've had a lot of people express to me that uh, they've had that sort of experience uh, with me. The thing is, quite often uh, when I've worked with people, that experience would be like a, a need to come and see me again. Mm. And that sort of changed now since mm. I've since I've set up my academy. And uh, what's it what's it like for you now with all the work that you've done? Because you've seen lots of people who are masters at their profession, qigong, mm. um, and all sorts, kung fu, everything. And I was different. I know I was different to you because I was not wanting to be your master. I was wanting mm. you to be your own master. Mm. What yeah, was it yeah, like yeah. having to deal with me telling you that you are better than the people that you were actually trying to be better, um, trying to look up to? Yeah, yeah, I didn't really know exactly what what kind of skills you had. So I was like, yeah, bullshit, Chase. <laughs> you haven't seen anything I do. <laughs> that, 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 that's what I was thinking in my mind. Um, but yeah, started to push on a few buttons because I know there was part of it that sort of rang true. So that's what started to um, it sort of it sort of annoyed me a little bit too because uh, I was like because uh, I could hear there was some truth inside of it. And it's like there were uh, and you were articulating things in a way that was really direct in terms of um, you know I guess in the in the Chinese medicine model and the Qigong model is always about dispersion generally. So, um, so if you have a, like a, an issue with sadness or grief, that's to do with the lungs, and uh, then the, it, the uh, one change in the body will alter the functioning of the rest, the rest of the body. That's Chinese medicine. Yeah. So, um, so it makes it quite quite complex. So, if there's a problem in the lungs, a lot of grief being stored there, then it's going to affect the liver, it's going to affect the kidney, and all sorts of stuff. And over as you get older, those problems come out more prominent because the, the kidney system can't handle it pretty much. Mm. So. Um, <clears throat> Um, so they're aiming to always, okay, we need, let's do this uh, breathing practice, this uh, energy movement practice to move the energy so it's more balanced in all the organ system. And, um, and let's try to find in the, in the auric system somewhere where the, the blockage is. We don't have to know what it is, we just get the energy moving in and out of that, that blockage, how far out that could be. Uh, but when it comes to you, it's like, okay, the problem here is the grief and this is the insight for it, this is where it comes from and this is how you can unlock this right now in two minutes. Then you do a practice for the next three months every day. That's literally how quick it worked yeah. for me, and th th that's that's the that's what you give me. Yeah, it was quite fascinating for you to actually experience that when when you were talking to just previously about how <coughs> you would do this meditation practice, and we've got like two minute meditations mm. in in the academy work that actually just switches you off 
um, into another space. And it's not, we don't do a dispersion technique, we do an in interconnected base yeah, yeah, technique. It's yeah. completely opposite yeah. to uh, what Chinese medicine does. And I love Chinese mm, medicine. Yeah, so, so, yeah. We just do it mm. that builds upon it mm. as opposed to try yeah, to yeah. get away from something. Oh, yeah. And I think yeah. that's one thing that I think you've really learned from me is to not run away from mm. how you feel and what yeah, you're yeah. thinking. Yeah. And that's probably why it's so fast. Mm. Would you agree? Oh, big time, big time. My mind wants to go to darkness. It wants to, and, mm. and you know, you've told me that that's one of my gifts. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 I love going to darkness now. It, it helps me sit with the darkness in other people when I when I treat them. And mm. um, nearly everyone in the world there's a deep sadness inside most people. And it's like, okay, that's um, that's a useful thing to have in my soul. Um, yeah. That that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the things that we've spoken about is that this idea of enlightenment uh, is sort of like it's taught that you've got to be happy. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing. And yeah. that's not the truth. It's actually in the sadness that actually where the gold is. Mm. And I've told you this many times, and I think you figured it out that I might be a little bit right. Because <laughs> we've gone in and every time I've gotten you into that, that deep sad part of you, mm. You've found you found yourself feeling better, mm. and yeah. found yourself feeling more and more connected with who you are, what yeah. you are, and why you are. Yeah, yeah. And I look at the the meditation practice that would take about an hour to two hours to do, and it's just it's all sorrow. It's a sorrow practice. It's like it's a it's a practice for enlightenment and overcoming the fear of death and stuff like that. Mm. But um, but the energy of it, it's it's a it's honouring and a and a um, just connecting with that sorrow energy. And remember with the, the COVID support stuff you did, we went into sorrow, the different avenues people go into sorrow, depression and guilt and resentment and all that sort of stuff. They go into sorrow. Another side of it is that is that complete sort of, uh, just they drop out of the emptiness. Mm. That um, I guess that, that meditation, what I, what I feel in meditation is that you're dropping to the emptiness. It's like, just beautiful space. It's on the other side of sorrow. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's, it's nice to actually see a different you too, Chris. Like you always used to have this feeling like you didn't want to be here and uh, death was sort of felt like it was on its way for you. What does it feel like now um, knowing that, right, because all I hear is how good you are mm. and um, how busy you are now and the amount of pressure that you had on yourself, you had no no ability to deal with your finances you mm. you've you've doubled your income um in one move in yeah. one move just with my suggestion that i suggested a little while <laughs> before uh, we got there I'm a bit slow, a bit a slow, bit slow. sometimes we're there. a bit slow but we, <laughs> we do get there and now you're in a space where you're really wanted for for your stuff and and, and what you do and i've heard a few people actually mention to me that no no know us both that you're actually Better at me, better better at he helping people heal than than me. How does that feel? I don't believe it. <laughs> well, this is this is what I'm hearing. So, and for me, I get really really excited because I've you know the challenge I put mm, on you. Mm, yeah. You know, my challenge is for you to be a better healer than me. Mm -hmm. And um, for me to hear someone, a couple of people saying, "Hey, Chris has actually got it got it over you, Jay," uh, it just makes me so happy. Right? I know that I've got so much to share. Like I showed you a really wicked tech le technique just mm. last week mm. and you're integrating that and you've just gone oh my god this is an another level because i've got so many yeah, tools yeah. in my tool toolkit mm. mm. i think the thing that i love about you the most is you're so much like me because you don't you don't see yourself the way other people see mm. you yeah, yeah. yeah right and so what that does is it gives you you know a real sense that um from a receiver's perspective that mm you're not above anyone mm. i feel mm. and um, to have other people tell me that you're better than me i'm just thinking wow he's starting to get to where his where his place is in life and we've talked about this and we're we're talk I, I spoke to you about this uh probably about five or six months ago about letting go of the result of helping people get better mm. and you're like what the heck is that all about? Yeah. We spoke. We're here to make people better, and you're spo and you're telling me to let go of that result. I can't do that. How are you going with that? Like it's a it's a very foreign concept to most people. You know, you 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 meant to come in, they come and see you, you provide a result, and that person feels better. And I'm actually trying to encourage you to let go of that result, to let go of 
the enormous amount of pressure yeah, that yeah, therapists yeah, have on them yeah. to provide a result to their clients. <clears throat> How are you doing with that um, information now? Yeah, um, I understand it a bit, uh, a bit more. There's still more understanding to go, but th- that's that's in my face every day, every single day. Um, that like you know, seven or eight times a day, a new client comes in, and it's um, it's like I'll, I'll, I'll help them with whatever I whatever skill set I have and whatever knowledge I have. But in the end, what their body does with does with this is is up to what their body does. Mm. Uh, and then I get people calling me, and I'm, I'm booked out for pretty much three weeks. Uh, and it's like I had to put emergency appointments in. I was thinking within three weeks of opening, do I have to shut my diary? It was like because my nature is to help people. And it's like when people ring up, I've hurt my back really bad. I know I could could essentially fix that and, and help them in in one session because mm. uh, I know their body so well. And, um, and I was like, I can't see you, man. I was like, I can't see you for three weeks. I didn't see it well with me, so I had to put emergency appointments into my diary. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but uh, that's sort of pushing on the boundaries, whereas the old me would go, yeah, I'd come in tonight at 8 o'clock at night, yeah. right when I've just been treating people all day, yeah. and then I'd probably get three people in one day. It's like, I hurt my back, I hurt my neck. It's like, well, what, I'll keep treating till 12. It's like, that's not the answer. So there's always this boundary being pushed on, and it's like, when I say, no, I can't see you, like, they'll find another way or to understand what's happening with them right now. Yeah. yeah. So I've sort of pushed you and I will be continuing to push you into that, you know, healer teacher model. So then you can offload a lot of your skill set to your clients and you already do that. Um, the coolest thing that I'm hearing around you is that, you know, people need you, hmm. right? And you never really had that push like and drive and this is what it feels like I, I you know i was booked out six weeks in advance mm. and people were just like when can i see you when can i see you when can i see you and uh what i learned to be able to do with people is just show them that they didn't need me yeah, right? yeah. over time mm. right and that comes down to that that mm. process that we that we have to learn from a supporter's perspective mm. as to not be that one that's needed because mm. in our psychology uh, when i started I don't know about you, Chris, that I needed to be needed. Mm, I, same, yeah. I, I really needed to be that person mm. that actually was required because my self-esteem was so low. Mm. And I thought, well, if people need me, then I'm okay. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Is that, does yeah, that happen yeah, with t- you still t- sometimes? Uh, it's, it's a lot better. Like yeah. inside, just opening up my clinic inside myself is like there's a confidence there that just feels good. Yeah. Um, you know, I live with dread every single day of my life until probably March this year, we did some process around that time, and it's like the dread went. I think I'd made some changes, so it was actually life changes that made mm-hmm. that stop happening. Uh, and doing all the all the, the academy work, um, like running the shapes every day and, and um, using them with treatments and all sorts of stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, but like that, uh, the confidence there is like, you know, I, I, I can do this, I can go and I can help people. And if something bad happens, that it's not going to be the end of the world, mm. and um, I don't have everything have everything uh, learnt and perfected right now, that was a big pressure I put on myself. Yeah. As soon as I let go of that, it was like the results are even better now, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it funky yeah. not having to be yeah. perfect? Yeah, yeah. And you, people expect something of you, and you give it, and it's like, oh, all we have to do is learn to be okay with ourselves, mm. and like to to be living with dread for such a long period of time and then March comes along and it's gone it must have been a bit weird having yeah, it yeah, gone yeah, like yeah. it's like a friend mm. when you have dysfunction mm. it's like a friend that you've had for so long yeah. and then your buddy's disappeared and yeah. you can't hug it anymore yeah, yeah. what was it like actually having that dread disappear were you did you feel like there was a void that you were missing something uh, yeah, initially I was like holy shit we've, we've made a big breakthrough here Mm. Like uh, and it's like who who am I going to be without this dread? And then I, I don't know how maybe two weeks into him, like my subconscious was trying to work out ways how can we bring this dread back? Yeah, no, it's, like, it's just, just so familiar. And and my my psychology just loves familiarity, just loves it. it feels safer with with even things that are dysfunctional. It's just, it's safe. It's known. And how do you deal with that? You know, when you we we know that from therapist perspective, you'll see someone and you give them the key, or they've found the key to unlock that door, and then 
you see them again and they've actually thrown that key away, yeah. put it under the carpet and said, I've, I've got this thing back. Yeah, yeah. It only lasted three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know now that it's actually the need to have it back. How do you communicate to your clients? Um, and, you know, sometimes we've got to be quiet. They've got to go through that process. How do, we, how do you get that patience and that sort of thing to not be concerned that you've done something wrong or you haven't completed the, the process properly? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what is it that you do now that's I'm, different? I'm still pretty much in that space, largely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I still feel like I, I could have... Could have done I, better. I, I need to be more skilled to negotiate these kind of things even more. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going in directly... Uh, um, like going hard at people's psychology, I'm, I'm not in that place yet. I'm not confident enough with that sort of stuff yet. Yeah. But um, but my what I do is just hold hold that space. Like my energy feels quite different in the last two years from the academy work. Yeah. Especially in the last last year. But just I just hold a presence. Um, just accept honor, and when I touch people, as I, I give their body full support, give the nervous system support. As like I honor, I accept, I acknowledge exactly what's happening with you, no matter how mu- how much you want to judge it. I I, I honor that place. And um, what does that feel like actually oh, that, that, not that, having that, any judgment of someone else's that's space? Amazing. Without. It's so so freeing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's like full of energy for me. Yeah. Which I'm sure you would know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I love about healing. When I was doing it, is that I'd actually feel so full no matter where someone was at Mm. because I knew that if I didn't judge the Mm. person in front of me or lying on my table then I know that I wouldn't be judging myself and I would know I I knew I wouldn't be putting pressure on myself and the timing for someone to change something wouldn't be on me it would be on the opportunity so at any point in time like you've had this amazing experience with someone um, being able to write yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For the first time in yeah. since she was seventeen or something. Uh, I think ten years. I think it was. She's um, she's be in her seventies now. I think yeah. she said about ten years. She hasn't had a right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. that's massive. But she's had the condition since she was seventeen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're yeah. right. And so we're looking at situations where people have had that space where they get that opportunity at any point in time yeah. to completely resurrect <clears throat> how they feel and how they think yeah. about themselves. Yeah, yeah, and not having the pressure to, um, uh, it's like I do my work and then I let it go. Because uh, clients, you know, especially when you care, they, um, they'll be on your mind. It's like I don't want, don't want people endlessly in my mind all the time. Mm. You know, I'll use I'll use the octahedron or whatever to push people out of the shape, and that tends to work pretty well out, out of my out of my field. Yeah. Um, or if someone says something that annoys me and triggers me, it's like it's not them; it's what's inside me that's yeah. they've, they've hit home. That's why it's annoyed me. It's like, hey, well, I've got techniques now yeah. that I can use to process that. Whereas before, it was like I have to do two hour meditation because of what they just said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, or it, it might not even work. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that's yeah. that's sometimes we get into that place as healers. Like I think people think that we're superheroes too on some level. When you go and see someone, mm. we're not allowed to be sick. We're not allowed to be unwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how do you deal with that? Like you know, we all get sick. All of us mm. do. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with the the idea that you're not allowed to to be unwell because you've got this role that you play in society? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm. I'm I'm just watching it these days, just watching people's reactions and things like that and seeing, you know, people where they're reacting out of their own pain. Mm. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I'll, occasionally I'll feel a bit guilty for some clients as well. It's like they really needed me that day and I was sick. Mm. Yeah, but I've got to, okay, where, where can I look at in my, what I, in my diet, in my sleep or whatever that's made me get sick? So then it's a pathway for me to understand health even more. Yeah, so tell me about that. This is something that's really passionate for me and I know I've spoken to you really strongly about this because I know we <laughs> we used to have a little bit of a issue with our food intake, didn't we, buddy? Um, <laughs> still do <laughs> sometimes. Work, but it's much better. Um, much better. So um, what what's it like now knowing that as a healer you have to model the health regime? Like to yeah, yeah. as you've cleared things up and stopped doing things the result is better energy mm. and yeah, yeah. and the, the, also the result is better 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 deal for the clients mm. what's what's it like knowing that you can't um have that cake yeah yeah um I, you know my mind wants to go to a place of resentment that's where my mind goes so part of it i get a bit resentful sometimes it's like no it's fine it's just it's my path and it's um it's the the healer pathway that i'm walking and 
uh, that's part of it. I want to I want to make my energy as strong as I can. I, I want to let what, what whatever God wants to come through me. I want I want that to be as strong as possible. Mm. So if that means I need to clean up my diet, which is you see a lot of McDonald's is like, how can that be good for me? <laughs> and, and my stomach wasn't liking it. Yeah, that's and, right. and I walked in the door one day and he like your your stomachs. About to cark it, and then six weeks later, it did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, happy with that. So now, now I see if I uh, like last night I had uh, had some ice cream. First time I had ice cream in uh, years, it felt like. Mm. Um, and yeah, today my eyes are more more bunged up than usual. I'm snotty. Mm. Uh, I hope that doesn't turn into a cold in weeks' time. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I'm just seeing the the repercussions of what I eat really quickly, and then uh, I think it was about a year ago, uh, he taught us a technique to help see auras more strongly and develop yep. that and uh, and whenever i try it i get a headache and you said oh it's your food mm. yeah so i was like okay i'll um i'll adjust and now now when i do that kind of thing i don't get headaches anymore but um i, I don't see auras as much as i'd like but i hope that skill comes out one day it just seems like a fantastic tool yeah yeah it is and look at all the all the stuff that we do you know to help people i think it's really really important that we learn to really you know, keep focusing on helping ourselves because our bodies, we only get one mm. and we've got to learn to actually um, appreciate it and, and, and understand what it needs. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're, when you're doing, um, you know, healing work, it does take a lot of effort to make sure that you're not giving yourself away, mm. not losing energy because, you know, you put yeah. your hands on people and there is, you know, when, once you make that human contact, I know people are listening to this right now, I know you'll, you'll have gone and had a coffee with someone and felt completely gassed without even touching someone. So when you touch someone and you're offering something to them, to make sure you have your energy maintained is huge. Mm. And it really comes down to lots of things, psychology, your spirit, oh, yeah. you know, how you think and what you're putting in your body. It's mm. like it all comes down and, you know, how much energy yeah. um, you're able to to build in your body mm. which you obviously yeah. do with your qigong and all your practices that you mm. do that you've been doing for years now i've got a question for you what's one piece of advice that you could give um give to other people um on their healing path like what what would what's one thing that you wish you had have known years ago that you do now that people could actually go could get a bit of gold from right now. Yeah, I, I guess to see to see um, all the people that you work with as people who are who are teaching you. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. That 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 person is a mirror or polarity for you. Yeah. And, uh, and the healing pathway is not like you are the healer and you're healing everyone as if you're as if your shit doesn't stink. It's like that's that's completely not the not the thing. It's yeah. like uh, you're going into a healing pathway, and then people will trigger, trigger you. The people in front of you, you have to, you have to stand up for them, uh, just like you do. You hold the integrity for them. Things that they can't do. Um, yeah, I, I, my biggest thing is have techniques that are quick and that work. Yeah, that, that's what was more was my problem. I had techniques that I thought were working, but it's like after years of looking, and it's like that wasn't working that well, and yeah. it took a lot of time to do. Yeah, that's what actually so, makes, makes me a bit bit annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's giving you the yeah. maybe the permission to know that yeah. things don't have to take a long time. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think we 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 think things have to take forever, and then we uh, we take forever yeah, because yeah, of what yeah, the yeah, way yeah, that exactly. we think. Uh, it's very much an Eastern idea too. Yeah. Uh, I get the impression like uh, we're looking at you know 10, 20, 40 years to become enlightened. That sort of thing is like. There's enlightenment every second of the day if you... If yeah, you're, uh, exactly. And the old... Uh, it's called the light bulb moment, I think. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we can get that all the time. I think it's really important for us to, to learn to be able to do well. And if you're, um, you know, how do how would we... You, you do lots of things. You've got YouTube. Uh, there's lots of places that we can, uh, can, we can actually find out what you do because mm. you've been teaching as well for a mm. while you, yeah. do, you teach 20 years yeah. qigong and tai chi qigong and tai chi and uh, kung fu i haven't taught since covid but um yeah, yeah are you going to get back years. to it into it again or are you, uh, you're um, just too busy with everything that i'm just letting the with? the business stuff settle first yeah um, yeah then ne next year will be uh, my first program will be released and i just said i was just driving i tend to when i drive there's something you told me 
um, when I drive, I just have all these downloads of like all the creative ideas. It's like yeah, when you're moving, the downloads will come through. Yeah. Um, so I was just driving yesterday, and like a whole shoulder program got downloaded to me. Yeah. So I just cool. have to work that out. So I'll look at releasing that next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll be teaching in that regard, but I'm looking at doing um, finishing some more training for the qigong. Yeah. Uh, especially more medical qigong, so I just have more knowledge of the the medical part. Yeah. Uh, so I look at uh, you know doing that next year and be teaching teaching that as, as courses because I know the people who come to me will need that extra extra thing. So mm. they're not just me there all the time. Isn't it the best thing, like, um, from a perspective of, um, you know, teaching and learning is to constantly in that space of no matter what you're doing, you're trying to learn something new. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right now I'm learning astrology. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm loving, I'm loving it and I'm learning karate yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah um, so cool. And it's, it's, it's so, it. so important yeah. that we, you know, we keep learning no matter what stage of development that we're in because mm. there's one thing that I think is head up the ass syndrome when you think you got you, you think you know it all um, that's the biggest misnomer I think is that we're all here on this planet to, to learn how to become you know better people and and learn to figure out how we can be the best we can be and you know it's been an absolute um, pleasure to chat to you today especially from where you come from and where you are now and I'm I'm you know I'm a pushy bugger and you're in my academy so you <laughs> you'll have to deal with the fact that I'm going to be pushing you to get um, more of what more of your magic out mm. right and uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me today thanks Jason. thanks for inviting me yeah. awesome all right hopefully you guys got some uh, some good pieces of information around this Chris is one of the most amazing healers that I've ever met and I'm really looking forward to his journey and what he's going to be creating. So if you, if you want to find out where he is and what he is, uh, there'll be uh, links, links down below on, on, this, uh, on this podcast and also on, my, on the um, www.wellnessbreakthroughacademypodcast.com. So jump on that. You'll be able to see the video here if you want to, if you want to see what we look like having a chat. And... Um, all the links will be down there. So thanks so much for joining and thanks, Chris. Thank you.